All right, all right. We live. Ready to do it, y'all. All right. What the hell? We're going to do some touchbacks. For the thick today, y'all. Try and get started on time. WHGE 95.3 FM coming up. No open eye. my children of the sun. Welcome to the Open Eye on WHGE 95.3 FM. I'm Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist and host. That's right, right here on, you know what? Look, my folder is thick today, so I'm going to get started right now. You know, we talked about last week how this, uh, I don't know what she is, right-wing activist or whatever she is, couldn't for the life of her, to save her life, define woke. Okay? And, of course, what's happened is right-wing extremists and, you know, uh, right-wing racists, because that's what the hell they are, uh, had tried to make woke a blanket for anything black or that might um, benefit black people or you know, anyone that's woke and can see exactly what's going on, you know, what they have done is it's, it's everything bad, you know, anything woke is, is, is bad to them. You know, what's up, what's up, Brother Vaughn, Brother Jarday, I see y'all, and Tracy, all right, all right. You know, the earliest known examples of wokeness as a concept revolve around the ideal of black consciousness, waking up to a, to a new reality or, I can't say a new reality, but waking up to reality or at this framework, and it dates back to the early 20th century. The phrase stay woke turned up as part of a spoken afterword in the 1938 song Scottsboro Boy, a protest song by blues musician Huddy Ledbetter, better known as Lead Belly. 
The song describes the 1931 saga of a group of nine black teenagers in Scottsboro, Arkansas, who were accused of raping two white women. If you don't know the story of the Scottsboro boys, please look it up. The phrase stay woke has history in African-American vernacular English as far back as the 1930s in, in some contexts referring to an awareness of the social and political issues affecting African-Americans. The phrase was uttered in lyrics, like I said, by Lead Belly uh, in the mid 20th century and post-millennium by Erica Badu. Yeah, but it's always, and probably before the 1930s, been part of part of our culture. What's up, Sherry? I see you, sister. Uh, you know, I can remember mm, doing the, when I was a kid during the um, late 60s and after the death of Malcolm when I was just learning about the Nation of Islam, you know, one of the sayings from the Nation of Islam was Elijah Muhammad woke him up. You know, if you're not woke, you sleep. But let me tell you something. If you are conscious but afraid to drop knowledge because of what others will think, still a slave. Yeah, I swear. And let me get my disclaimer out the way right quick. All right. Knock yeah, that out. The views and opinions expressed on the open eye are those of the host, guests, and contributors. All right, all right. They do not reflect the policy or position of WHDE 95.3 FM, nor our sponsor, the Delaware Center for Homeless Vets. Any content provided by Open Eyes hosts, guests, or contributors are theirs and are not intended to malign any religion ethnic group, company, or individual. All right, all right. You know, the last thing that uh, white supremacy wants is for black people to be woke. And they do everything they can to blind you, to gaslight you about white supremacy. It doesn't even exist. Racism didn't happen. And when you get some of our own people when I get up and say, the slave trade didn't happen, you know, that really distresses me. To liquidate people, you start by depriving them of their memory. They destroy your books, your culture, your history, and someone else writes other books, gives them another culture, and that's another story. After that, people slowly forget what they are, who they are. And the world around them forgets even faster. Yeah, that, that, that leads me to this, uh, to this quote. Come on, paper. To this quote by uh, Brother Kaba Kamini. I've had some problems with Brother Kaba Kamini and what have you, but uh, very knowledgeable brother. Very knowledgeable brother. And the problems I had with him, uh, Sherry, I know you know what I'm talking about. As, uh, Brother Kamini, well, anyway, I don't, I don't want to go there right now because I really think this quote is is really significant. Mm -hmm. As we begin to look at who we are as a people, as we look into the contributions of Af African people to the world, Dr. John Henry Clark often told us that the missing pages of world history is African history. And once you understand the role that Africa has played in shaping of our intellectual world in terms of the things we have achieved as a people, you will begin to understand why there is a war on history. Let me stop right there. You know, uh, and I got a list. Yes, indeed, there's always been a war on our history, especially here in America. There's always been a war on our history. And of course, what uh, Governor Ron DeSatan is doing down in Florida is he is trying his damnedest just to erase our history. You know? Oh, it, it's, it's wokeism. It's just wokeism. Yeah, yeah. Right. When you deal with a war on history, you're doing more than that. What you have to do is understand and look at the world, look at the work of Dr. Chank and the Diop the brilliant Sangalese scholar who wrote a book, The African Origins, Myths or Reality, Civilization or Barbarism, The Cultural Unity of Black Africa. 
And as he developed his understanding, he said that for a people to oppress another people, okay, and this can happen with any group, all right, this is nothing specifically to do with African culture or European culture. This is people to people. If you want to oppress a people, there are three things you take from them. You take their history, their language, and you take their psychological factor. The psychological factor of what we call VIPs. Dr. Leonard Jeffries called them the values, the interests, and the principles of a people. Take those from them. Take their history. Take their language. Take their values, interests, and principles. And then superimpose your history, your language, your values, history, principles on them. And no matter what conclusion they come to and the challenges they face, they will always act in the interest of the oppressor that took their history, language, values, interests, and principles. So when we wonder why the choices we make never seem to serve our best interests, you got to change the paradigm. You got to study your history. You have to study your language, your values, interests, and principles. Otherwise, you're lost in the borders of the mainstream and the miseducation of the oppressor. That's right. Let me, let me, let me, let me take a little musical break, get my thing up. Oh, wait a minute. All right, all right. You get a little musical break here. Uh, do something crazy. All right. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open eye. Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist. And like I said, change the paradigm. Know your history. The birthplace of advanced civilization. You always start off with giving us some history. Thousands of years before there was America, before there was England, before there were Mongols, before there were the Arabs, before there was Rome, before there were the Greeks, before there was China, before there was the Olmec, before there were the Persians, before there were the Phoenicians, before, before, before there was the Indus Valley, before there were the Sumerians, before there was even Kemet, there was the Kushite Empire. Yeah, you know what... Uh, Western scholars want us to believe that somehow Asians or Europeans came into Egypt and built the pyramids and, and, and went back to Europe. Is that crazy? There's nothing to compare in Europe to Kemet or Kush. There are no monuments. You know what? And I tell you another thing. This idea that, you know, uh, and, and it comes from the occultists, actually, that the pyramids or the structures in South America compare to the Egypt. You cannot compare a dirt mound to a freestanding structure. The structures so-called pyramids and not true pyramids in South America were dirt mounds that were surrounded with bricks and this, that, and the other. They were not freestanding structures. That's what the pyramids are. They're freestanding structures. And for those of you that don't know, I'll tell you something else. There are actually more pyramids in Kush 
than there are in Kemet. The African kingdom of Cush, which was located on the Nile River to the south of Egypt, the civilization of Cush thrived from about 2000 BC. I, I, I question those, those dates, the 350 common era. Cush and Egypt maintained a close relationship throughout much of Cush's long history. The two civilizations struggled for power and conquest. Okay, now I have to question that because what a lot of people don't understand, and they usually point to the 25th dynasty, craziest thing I can remember Ebony putting out uh, literature. is The 25th dynasty, the black pharaohs, as if the pharaohs weren't always black. And you have to understand the relationship between Cush and Kemet. These were cousins. Just to give you an idea of what happened during the 25th dynasty, what brought the rise of the 25th dynasty, and it wasn't the first time that it happened. Invaders from Asia came into Kemet and defeated them and, you know, took over. The Kemites went south to their cousins in Cush, where they were protected. And the warriors of Cush came north into Kemet and removed the invaders and put their African cousins back on the throne. Understand that. That's what actually happened, and it happened more than once. Every time the uh, Kemetic Empire you know, fell by the wayside behind invaders or internal corruption, Cush set things aright. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and scenes from ancient monuments, you see the Cushites bearing gifts to the Kemites. You know, and like I said, what this shows is the, the relationship between these cousins and brothers. Okay, so what you need to understand is Kemet came out of Cush. Families in Cush looking for a more expansive way of life came north into Lower and Upper Egypt and established an empire. And that empire was always supported by their cousins in the South, in, in Cush. WHGE 95.3 FM, hope you have liked that little history lesson. This is Patrice Gibbs, Dove and I. Uh, coming up, my partner in consciousness will be joining us, Los Roma. All right, stay tuned. All right, all right. Hey, 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 why, why, why? How you doing? How you doing? I heard you out there. Uh huh. Just mm -hmm. I, I, didn't hear you I, I got a call from Devontae. Devontae Hines. You know? He said he know you. I can't. I can't. I can't. He said he know Yorkie. What is in reference to? Uh, he called. He wanted me to come on this podcast. Brother Roger called me. Roger, that I work with. Hey, 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 excuse us, y'all. We still alive here. I'm just talking over some some stuff. Yeah, he wanted me to come on his podcast or whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess I to talk see, about I what see. we do. Yeah. I got to see. Yeah, he said he no, he mispronounced no Saroma, but I ain't holding that against you. You know everybody do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is. All right, all right.
right. We're just waiting for No Saroma to get it together, y'all. We're going to be right back. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and go into this short story right quick. All right, something that... Uh, you ain't lying. Huh? I know. I know. I'm talking to people on Facebook. <laughs> all right, all right. WHGE 95.3 FM, The Open Eye. You ever heard of reckless eyeballing? Did you know that was a thing? And, and, and I tell you, it's something that um, we have to deal with even now. You know, I saw, and I'm sure a lot of you have, uh, here you go, no Sarone. I'm sure a lot of you had seen the brother, he was outside a restaurant or something. And the lady on the other side of the parking lot called the cops on him because he scared her to wait because he looked at her. What kind of crap is that? Yeah, and that, that comes right directly from our Jim Crow days. Just, just to give you uh, an idea. During, during Jim Crow segregation, a black person could be accused of reckless eyeballing, which was a perceived and proper look at white, at white person, at a white person, and it was always presumed to have a sexual intent. Matt Ingram, a black turnip farmer, I meaning he's a sharecropper. I don't really like to use those polite terms. You know, he was the, uh, like a tenant farmer was living in a fair environment where he, you know, rented the land and got his fair share. No sharecropper, another form of slavery. Anyway, he was convicted of reckless eye, uh, reckless eyeballing in Yanceyville, North Carolina in 1951. That is just 10 years before I was born. This dude was in my lifetime. Matt Ingram was among the last convicted under this framework in a 1951 case made notorious by civil rights activists in North Carolina. A 17-year-old white woman named Willie, Will, Willie Jean Boswell testified that she was scared when her neighbor Ingram looked at her from an, uh, from an approximate distance of 65 feet. He was 65 feet away, down the street some damn way. She ain't know where the hell he was looking. Prosecutor demanded a conviction of assault with intent to rape. And of course, that was later reduced to assault on a female by the judge, leading to a two-year sentence. And he was defended by a white lawyer. Uh, yeah, that helped a lot. Now, they had an appeal in Superior Court. The judge instructed the jury that Ingram was guilty if he used intentional threats or menace of violence, such as looking at a person in a leering manner and causing another to reasonably fear imminent danger. So he irate her, I guess. The all white jury once again returned a conviction leading to a six month sentence on the chain gang. <laughs> Suspended for five years. Yo, what's up, world? <laughs> yo, yo. You said I rape. I rape. I rape. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Yo. Reckless eyeball. Yeah. Uh, that's what it is. Following the pressure from the NAACP and African American media outlets like Ebony, the North Carolina Supreme Court, vacated the conviction because it cannot be said that a pedestrian may be assaulted by a look. However, frightening from a person riding in an automobile some distance away. He may have looked with lustful eyes at how many men haven't, that there was the absence of any overt act. The look alone no longer represented grounds for a conviction. Of course, people continue to be con uh, convicted of assault if there was a reasonable apprehension of danger, such as body movement in the direction of the person under observation and so on. Ingram spent two years in prison and uh, while his three trials took two and a half years to resolve. He died in 1973. I was 12 years old then. Yeah. How many times have you been walking along? Yeah, I saw a brother and this was in 
Philadelphia. Right. Not Philadelphia, Mississippi. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Up the street. Up the street. All right. And he looked at some cops, and they looked at him, so he waved. They pulled over, threw him up against the car, and patted him down. What you waving at us for? Why are you looking at us? What the hell? You know what? I ain't being friendly with no goddamn cops. Ooh. They gonna pull your ass over and, 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 and cuff you up. But you got to think, their, their only job, in their mind, mm -hmm. is to get people to pay these tickets, mm -hmm. to pay these fines, mm -hmm. the, the, just to accumulate money mm -hmm. for the government. Mm -hmm. Now, how they get that is it, it can be zero to a hundred things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's wherever they have or they feel that they need to put that in effect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you look at me wrong, what you looking at? Yeah. And yeah. you say something, oh, you... you uh, you threatening the police officer. Uh, and the BCID. I mean, ID. Right. And you, oh, ID. you, you resisting. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's how that's how it is. But okay. or, or the, the worst the worst uh racist criminal that it has been pressing down on the blacks is the government. Oh hell yeah. So I mean so in saying that I some of the laws and stuff that's put in effect, that's mm -hmm. that's the most they are the most racist laws that can ever be put in effect. Oh, yeah. and, and, and you know what? And we as a people let these so called uh uh senators and all of these diplomats put these politicians. laws and politicians and and look put these laws in effect mm -hmm. where still we don't even stand up, we don't go bear arms, we don't fight this government, which we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. This the Second Amendment, you know what I'm saying? Now, and you, you that's what? what's that's what's you been put what? down on us. Now, I mean it starts from now, the government. The if it, if the we thing. don't attack here's it from the, the thing, government bro. side, we we always gonna be going through this fight. Yeah. Another four hundred yeah. Now you said bear arms in the Second Amendment. Because that's and, the only way you can fight or you can now, stand up and no, that's the only way you can stand up we're out no fight fire with we're fire. We're outnumbered and we're outgunned. Okay? So it's not the way David you go. It's Goliath. Goliath. It's they what? They, David be Goliath. I'm that's a saying, myth that's, from the Bible. I'm just saying. That's so a, that's BS. I'm just saying. That's, I'm just saying. Yeah, it, and I gotta believe you believe. You gotta believe in yourself. And, and that's you, what we're I, not yeah, doing. You have to believe stand in up yourself. for yourself. Believe in yourself. We do stand, stand up action. for ourselves, but it's a way to do it. Okay? And if you think the way we've been doing it, it's not been happening. If you think that we are going to arm up and take on the government and the U.S. military. That's nuts. The U.S. military has weapons that make your best armament pea shooters in comparison. We know the, that. The we U.S. Know government, that. the U.S. government, the U.S. government has weapons, okay, that can see in the dark and shoot around the corner. Yeah. Okay. I don't so we have to be. Here's the thing. But it's all people thing. that's running on weapons. It's your aunt or your brother or your sister or your aunt's cousin or a third generation person that's running that for the government. They, they are might be running they that for the people. government, they but do you think people. there, there they are, are more the black people. people in the government I, than there are white people? White thing. And not only that, but <laughs> most of the black people, most of the black people in the military, right, are, are slave minded. Their thing is, you know, we're here for the American government. They call out the goddamn National Guard on your own streets, and your own black brother be standing there with a gun, just like the goddamn police. Ooh. Never, ever, ever give them any consideration when they got on that uniform. Of course. Because that uniform they is more important uniform than their on. skin color. They didn't have a uniform on when they killed Michael. Malcolm, they was black. We, but, I mean, like it's, said, it's, but what we're talking about is taking on the U.S. government. No, I'm talking about taking on the people that make these laws. And if okay. they're a part of the government, these yeah, politicians, that's who we're talking to. And how do we want to take on? Of course, we can't take on. The, how we going to uh, take on the, the people? Two billion, how, okay, five billion. We got that part. How are we going to take on the people and the politicians? By putting them out, having them scared to be in a position that they picking and, out for okay. us. And when they get in that position, that? we be out in front of their house, not but not standing there, but destroying like they do us. Okay, and I mean, so we, we go, we the people. you go and destroy some politicians' house. I ain't what do you think? I, I you just say that. I ain't saying. I mean, I ain't mean it literally destroy. I mean paperwork destroy. They put paperwork and legislation in for us. When okay. I say destroy, I mean See, destroy the with the paperwork. Okay, not. You're, you're, you're actually on point on that point. 
okay? Because like I always say, this is something that you have to do with extreme intelligence. Exactly. Okay? You have to infiltrate and you have to start on the local level. You have, fire, to infiltrate, fire. you have to infiltrate the government, okay? And you take over the government through infiltration, okay? This is the art of war as as, as expressed by Sun Tzu. Yeah, so okay? what I'm but saying... If you, if you... See, here's the thing, okay? If we can... We're not so much outgunned, but we're outorganized. And until we get organized as a people, okay... We're in, we're in a, 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 what's that called? What's the word I'm looking for here? We're, we're in a, a, a inferior position, okay? And I don't mean we're inferior as a people. I'm saying in our position, we're in an inferior position. This is why it's so important uh -huh. that we unite. This is why they're so afraid of us uniting, not just in America. But listen. Okay, this, let, this, me this, this, let me finish. This, this, let me finish. This, this, let me finish. This, 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 let me finish. Let me finish, brother. Okay? What I'm saying, not just in America, but globally. And as long as we run around talking about we're not African, we're not black, and we're not even uh, 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 uniting on a global scale because white supremacy is global. Right. Okay. If we if we defeat the white supremacists here and out organize them, don't you think their brothers over in Europe are going to support them? Oh hell yeah, they are. I mean, oh hell yeah, they are. That's 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 what kept them alive so long, man. Yeah. Uh, and without yes, sir. And, and and it's 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 not only. This is happening to black. This is happening to the world. This it's not even a black and white thing no more. This is a money government hungry government that's just out to get everybody for the money. Okay. <laughs> you understand? Okay. So they they putting things in position that's making not just black people a slave, but we we are going to be at the bottom of it all, but yet mm -hmm. they're doing it to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's it's this is a much bigger thing than uh uh um uh, a black and white thing. Okay. It's it you know what? It's always black and white. And I'm going to tell you why, bro. Okay, because the European, like I said, right, the main thing, the, the, it, it, it's always your, see, the thing is this, what you have to understand, what you have to always realize, okay, okay, is the richest continent on the planet is Africa, Africa. okay, and the resources, including the mineral and the people, right, okay, right, is something that everybody in the world wants, but is not willing to pay for it. Why do you think China is over invested in Africa? But see, you know, China's a little smarter than the Europeans, because China, what they do is, with their infiltration and in neocolonialism, they don't get involved in who's in office. See, that's what the Europeans always wanted to control, was who was in office. They always put the puppet governments in. Right. Right. Okay. China don't care who the hell's in office, long they can buy them off. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's always, and, and, and this is something that, you know, that I repeat over and over that Dr. Clark said. You're looking for a friend, look in the mirror. Because we as black people the world over, the African the world over, we have no friends. Right. That's where WHGE 95.3 FM. Patrice Gibbs. No getting it on, getting it in. Yeah. All right, all right. Grat, grat, yo, Jay, Tracy, what's good? Gerard, hey, yo, I see you, Shay, what's happening? Hey, yo, they go, Rich, yo, Beast, where you at? Wow, what's good? Oh, uh, let me go back. Ah, bro. Yeah, what's good? You know what it is. No swarm in the building. Tell with Mr. Yeah. <laughs> hey yo, I, I had I had him flipping his collar just now. <laughs> I had him flipping. His... <laughs> yo, 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 any questions? Hit us up. Let me talk to us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. W H G E ninety five point three FM. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, indeed. You know, uh, I always say. Okay, I, look, what? this is what I say. I say it's about apologies, all right? all right? I don't really do apologies because if you slap my face and apologize, my face still stinks. Right. But here's on the other side. I was raised to think 
So I think about what I say. I engage my mind as a rule before I engage my tongue. Okay. Okay. So if I slap you, I make you do it. And there's going to be no apology coming. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I'll explain why I came to that. You hear about the um, news anchor got on the air and said, for shizzle my nizzle. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and she, they got fired? <laughs> got, oh, well, she got benched, you know. And, uh, let, me, let me, in case anybody didn't have the background on this. Uh, Barbie Bassett has not been seen on the air since she quoted Snoop Dogg on right. live television. But I'm sure she's going to be fine because white people always are. And e e even when they're being racist, actually, especially when they're being racist. All right? Wow. Oh, I know the white tears are coming. Oh, the white tears are coming. I'm also fully aware that we shouldn't laugh at other people's misfortune. But I cannot help it in this case because she did it to herself. You didn't engage your mind, see, but you've been getting away with racist crap so long. Right. right? So Barbie Bassett, a white meteorologist, and she was a longtime anchor on WLBT. Okay. No, but well, she could have just grew up in a neighborhood where it was all, you know, mm -hmm. black people, and she just yeah. take on some of the slang and boom, 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 boom. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You know, what you like mean. I just did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. then they come out on her while she anchored them on the air. You mm -hmm. know? And it's, it's, Here's the thing. <laughs> There's a thing, and, and uh, she's from Jackson, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Goddamn, so Mississippi. Yeah. Yo, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah right? And, of course, she said that, you know, um, I, I, I didn't mean anything out of it. Out of it. You know, this is digital blackface is what it is. Don't get it mixed. But shizzle my nizzle. You do better than get on there and say that. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Yeah, you did. You got on there. See, and, she and said, I'm going to make history today. You hear yeah, me? Yeah, she said that in the mirror when she was, before she went out there. Yeah. Oh, whoops. She said, I'm, she said, I'm going to say this. You know how they practice with before oh, yeah. they go live? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's been saying, yeah, I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm going to make history today. Yeah, you made history because they <laughs> set your ass down. They benched you. You know. See, uh, here's the thing. And I heard what you said about, you know, some, some people grew up in the black community. And uh -huh. Okay. That N word pass is local. I, I say you don't even pass it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I say it's local. That's, that's, you might got a pass from Joe Blow from Kokomo over there with his coon ass self to, to say the N word. You might got a pass from him, but it's local. Okay? Your pass is not national, it's not international. So when you come over there thinking that your N word pass is valid, to the wrong black person, and then you get punched out. Uh, wait a minute, I don't have the N-word pass. No, There's no, no other race that can validly say that, period, right. to right. me. That's word. Period. That's I got a right. problem with that. I if you are not black and you say that, you might get an eye out. Got man. On my end. On my end. I, I mean, that. that's like, that. to me, that's like uh, a, the most terrorist threat you can say. Yeah. Yeah, period. Because Not being of, of the nationality. Mm -hmm. that, that's the most terrorist threat you can the say. The worst thing you can right. say. Yeah. So I Word recommend means. don't do that ever. Ever. And you me. know, the crazy thing is this to me. You know, uh, why they want to say it? You know, I, I, they actually say, you know, um, <clears throat> I, I think it's, uh, we have freedom of speech and I think it's racist that I can't say the N-word. Well, I like the brother that was on that uh, talk show or whatever, it might have been a skit, right. where uh, the white guy was saying that. Well, I think it's racist that, you know, white people can't say the N-word. He said, go ahead and say it. You want to say it? Go ahead and say it. Oh, yeah, yeah, my yeah. man, yeah. yeah. He said, say it. Oh, I'll help you say yeah, it. Yeah, I'll say it with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, but you know, I mean. I will whoop your ass after <laughs> you say it. <laughs> Listen, man. It, through that word, it's, it's been hanging, killing, mm -hmm. rapes, and massacres. Words have churches context. Churches burned down. I mean, Sticks and stones may break and bones, words will never hurt, but they mm -hmm. will get you killed. That's what it will do. They will get you beat up. Yeah. You know, and I tell you something, when I was coming up, now it's coming up in the 70s. And right. In the 70s, we coming right off, right off of the Black Power Movement. In right. The you know. This um, was worse than Tupac. This was before Tupac. This was before Tupac. Most definitely. So, okay. So yeah. saying the N-word, even to another black person, 
okay, was 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 uh, uh, degrading. Uh, was uh, was was considered disrespectful yes. and disrespectful, yes. and you know you could get, get punched. No up. one wanted to be called that. That's right. You could get punched up. Now we fast forward and we say, wait, well, we take the words power and this, that, and the other, okay? And what well, we could say the most of that, and we say it in put songs. A couple songs, make it sound hip, mm -hmm. and make it sound smooth mm -hmm. with the bass line, and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. nah, nah, none of that. And the thing that's is. Not cool. You know, like my like like, like my man um, Cyrus Sutton said, he said, okay. "Okay, the word is valid. The word has context. The word has reality, and it's going to have reality until we stop being n words, okay? And we're not going to stop being n words until we make America stop being n word producing society, All right? So the word has context and meaning." And in, in, in this in this uh, uh, society and climate that we live in, and until we as a people make the N word in irrelevant, okay, it's gonna be. And here's the way you do that: what we as a collective have to realize is that free men name themselves slaves and named by their masters, slaves and dogs. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open eye. Yo, uh, <laughs> I can't stand that word either, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, especially when it's from, you know, a different nationality and it's in, a, the, and in, in that wrong type of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the way she came back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm Patrice Gibbs. I'm No Superman. We are on the open eye right here on WHGE 95.3 FM. Yeah. Hey. Hey. The orange disaster. He gonna do that perp walk, perp walk next week. Oh, he gonna do the crip, crip walk? Yeah, he's been indicted. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, he's been indicted in New York, for those of you that didn't know. Yes, he's been indicted in New York. Okay, now, now, right. now this is what I'm saying... Why this is how we we lose them so much? Okay. Now most of the Black American society don't know nothing about law, don't understand the law language, and none of that. Mm -hmm. So we can never write that judge up for the 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 misconduct that he did mm -hmm. for this particular trial because mm -hmm. we don't have the Harvard education or Oxford education to be able to formulate the letter to be able to draft the letter in the court style and all of their you know crit critiquing of putting in the, the um okay the uh, the indictment yeah, or the indictment okay and mm -hmm. You saying that he been indicted. You know how many people that don't know what indict, indicted mean? Yeah, how about now, that? Now, we have to break that down for them people to let them know. Mm -hmm. uh, what it means the is that he's been charged with a crime. Right. That but, he's going to be charged with a crime. Okay, so the indictment has come down. And, and the district attorney who brought this indictment down on him, well, actually, the indictment came from the grand jury. The district attorney presented the evidence to the grand jury. The grand jury said yes indict him by all means, okay? And the district attorney, a black man named Alvin Bragg, okay? okay? Now, here's what's crazy, of course, the um, uh, Republicans in Congress, okay, they are claiming that uh, it's unlawful, uh, you know, it's just a witch hunt, and they want to investigate um, district attorney Alvin Bragg. Well, Bragg came back at him. Because he does have the skills as an attorney to straighten them out. All right? And what he suggested is that the House GOP, that's the House Republicans, uh, inquiries appear to be functioning more as an interference for Donald Trump as, a, as more than a legitimate Congress oversight, which they don't have the authority to do in New York coming from the federal government. So what he did was he wrote them a letter. And he okay. responded to their yeah. That's, so, and that's yeah. how that's how you, that's how we all have to attack them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the like I said, work. fight fire with fire. That's word, you know. And he sent it to the um, 
by email. He sent them the letter. And what he said was, yesterday, the district attorney in New York filed charges against Donald Trump for violations of New York law. Okay. The charges filed yesterday were brought about by citizens of New York during their doing their civic duty as members of a grand jury who found probable cause to accuse Mr. Trump of having committed crimes in New York. Like any other defendant, Mr. Trump is entitled to challenge these charges in court and avail himself of all processes and protections that New York State's robust criminal procedure affords. What neither Mr. Trump nor Congress may do is interfere with the ordinary course of proceedings in New York State. Your first letter made an unprecedented request to the district attorney for confidential information about the status of the state grand jury investigation now indictment on Mr. Trump. Your second letter asserts that by failing to provide it, the district attorney somehow failed to dispute your baseless and inflammatory allegations that our investigation is politically motivated. That conclusion is misleading and meritless. We did not engage in a point-by-point -point rebuttal of your silly-ass letter. I'll put that part in there. <laughs> because our office <laughs> is legally constrained in how it publicly discusses pending criminal proceedings as prosecutorial offices are across the country, as you well know. That secrecy is critical to protecting the privacy of the target of any criminal investigation, as well as the integrity of the independent grand jury's proceedings. Basically, what he said was, uh, go to hell. You ain't got no authority to come up to New York and say, what we going to do? Because all y'all doing they're trying to protect the criminal, which Donald Trump is, and I like what Dr. Richie Richard said. Right. Trump going to be a defendant for the rest of his life. You know, it's the same Trump that took out a, a, a ad, no more than an ad. He actually, <clears throat> excuse me, paid $85,000 out mm -hmm. during this time to call for the death of the Central Park Five. That didn't have, was innocent. That were innocent. And <laughs> even when uh, they were released, he still said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Well, guess what? I don't know what you did, but you guilty as sin. <laughs> he said he did it. He, he did it. <laughs> devilish ass racist. He said it. But he did it. Do, yo, get it. I, That's yo, word. Well, listen, man. Yeah. You innocent to proven guilty. Yeah. And, and you know That's not how it works for black people. You, you seen Shaft, right? When you got money, mm -hmm. I mean when you got that moolah, mm -hmm. I mean the real paper, paper. Mm -hmm. I mean the uh, and there's you know only what? certain things that can stick. You got to be a 100% sure mm -hmm. that and have a witness of that 100% sure mm -hmm. that I did that. Right. Yeah. I don't think they'll be able to pull that off. I mean, I, they, I, make, I, up, I, they I, make up a lot of, they they make a up lot lot of fighting men, do a lot of other stuff. Uh, you know the, what? what? Like my boy Jared, he said, mm -hmm. and we got to wait to the sentencing time. Well, they, yeah, not that's R. True. Kelly, you understand? Right, he, right. He's not going to just get Fred Sanford and Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. You believe that. It's, well, that's not right, right, you know what? And, 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 and I understand the reality of that. I understand the reality of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but it's a lot against him. And I tell you what, and of course, this is unprecedented. No uh, 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 former president has ever been uh, uh, faced criminal charges. No former president. That's never happened in, in, in America before. But it has to be a historical thing that goes on for us to take the attention off of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. You know, what's really going on is the American dollar is diminishing. And, mm -hmm. it's, it, and that's the real talk should be the real talk of the world. Mm -hmm. Where, what are the American people going to do now that the American dollar has Plymouth? You know what? The, here's the thing about that, okay? We as black people, we are used to adversity. And we can deal with it, okay? All right? If you remember, well, if, if, if you know history, what history shows us, okay, the crash in 1929. What did rich white people do? A lot of them jump off the building and committed suicide because mm -hmm, they could mm -hmm. not deal with the adversity of survival. Okay, especially when see, and and, and this is the thing with with, with with white privilege. 
Okay, when you are dealing with and living in a place of white privilege, right? Okay, equality seems like oppression to you, and that's that's a big part of their problem. Right, you know? and this is what I'm saying that our our survival mm. traits that we did have mm. was solely strategically built around this underground currency that they trying to ban. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's that, not that's, underground currency. It's, I mean, you know, it's it is the world, people that don't have the main world dollar. I mean, yeah, it's the world dollar, world. but for the poor people and that I'm talking about in the hood that don't have a job that's hustling and, mm -hmm. and grinding and bumping. Are you and, talking about underground economy? Uh, mm -hmm. That we basically live in, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? As blacks, that's the economy they, they seem to be attacking to mm -hmm. make everything digital so that they can really track oh, yeah. what it is that you're doing. You oh, yeah. Well, they do that anyway. Because, I mean, you just look at Facebook and how many times, I think I heard um, Sister Sherry say it. Uh, what? <laughs> you be on the phone talking to somebody and you say, you know what? What? <laughs> I sure would like to get some of them shirts with the thingamajig on it. Next thing you know, you got an egg. Uh-huh, with the thingamajig. With the thingamajig on it on your you Facebook page. You watching and looking yeah. at all points, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Thank listening. And, yeah. and, and what make it super scary mm -hmm. is like like you said, if you say something that you want... And, and and you say it verbally, the phone can grab it, and then the next thing you know, that ad is in your um, phone. I heard that. Now they got the new technology, like you said, they can see through the building, through mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and that your phone can think what you're getting ready to think. <laughs> it almost seemed that way. I man. mean, that's what. Hey, that's hey do me a favor here, bro. What? See, uh, Jardel's um, <laughs> comment, because he got yeah. a whole paragraph there about what the brother's saying. This is a different degree of adversity, and our values today aren't the same as they were in the past. Distraction and miseducation have us mentally lost collectively and less organized than before. And that, and well, he, you know what? He ain't on point there. Oh, no, that's, that's their whole, that's that's their that. whole headline. You, know, you got to keep them. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but, because yeah. you know, we have so-called leaders. You know, look. And representatives. And representatives. You have you know, that case. are not looking to change the system. They are comfortable and complacent in their place in global white supremacy. Right? But it ain't. It, I think it's even deeper than that, Mr. Mm -hmm. Gibbs, for the simple facts that, you know, okay, this position right here has a $2 million salary a year, and you get this vehicle with it. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you got to do is say no every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. how many people will fall into that? Yeah. Or yeah. everybody that's poor, that want a job, that want something, or want to have a better life for themselves, mm -hmm. will most likely fall into that. Yeah. Only thing you got to do is say no. Only thing I got to do is say no. Okay, yeah. just no. Every, everything, everybody, mm -hmm. no, and I'm good. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And that's, 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 that's everybody in position. My God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll be hard they, they, And you know, the crazy thing is, <clears throat> we get politicians from the grassroots who, you know, we send to change the system. They get in the system and get they offered get, that. get offered that and this, that, and the other, and the money starts coming in and, you know, the position starts getting comfortable and right. what have you. Right. You know, and the next thing you know, they done basically sold us out. You know? They ain't really sell us out. They forgot about us. Yeah. And that's even worse than being sold out. How about that? They they just How forget that? that this was the agenda. Mm -hmm. And they don't even look at it, look at it as a sell out. No. You understand? Yeah. And that's yeah. what that's what make them comfortable. We have to get them from that point of being comfortable being a sellout to us. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, by yeah. putting the paperwork in and getting them people immediately ejected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, and that's 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 real talk right there, brother. You know, and the thing is, we need voices out here right. that will call people out. Right. I have no problem with calling them out. No, we don't. Right. We, we, but know? we need more of us. Yeah. We need a hundred thousand of us. That's what. That, that, that's you what. Know? We, now the brother that cracked on me to um, come on his show, you know, he said he wanted to do something serious. You know, because he what he had, yeah, <laughs> because he went, because what he had been doing, they drink and cuss on his podcast, oh, okay. and you know, it's, it's just for fun. And now he wants to, you know, do something positive for the community and all that. Well, that's all well and good, but you got to stick with that, brother. Okay, and you got to realize that when you get out here entertaining and clowning, 
okay? Uh, that's what you're doing, entertainment and clowning. Mm -hmm. But you gotta, but you gotta look at those that use that arena to educate us. And one of the main ones that come to mind when I say something like that, mm -hmm. Richard Pryor. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because we're with Richard Pryor, the greatest of all time, bar none. I don't care what you say, okay? But, and his stuff was funny as hell. You know, but when he was coming around to realize that it was all all the things that he was taught to him was he was seen as a, becoming a lie, mm -hmm. and his comedy started changing mm -hmm. more to waking us up. Mm -hmm. Then he started going through the problems. He's you know. Well, you know what? It's actually that's when he really became a big hit. Yeah. He, when he when when he stopped trying to be Bill Cosby, okay. That's when and he and he came into himself right. as Richard Pryor. That's when he became a big hit. All right. Uh, um, of course, we had um, there was another school shooting this week, and you know we were running close. I don't know if um, Brother Yorkie going to come in or not, but big ups if he is. Okay. But there was another school shooting, and it was where was it? Where was it? Nashville. Okay. Okay. And uh, it was actually a transgender person, okay? She was born a female, but she was transitioning to a male, okay? And she went into school and killed six people, three children, and three adults. What? Yeah. Yo, they should ban all transsexual people. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, just, <laughs> they should that, ban all they, trans they, 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 what you saying yeah, yeah. and that's just the way they react uh, that, you, know you hit saying? that nap on the head you hit that nap but that, that ain't was, a gun nah, I, no, not, it was, that it ain't a gun it was, I don't, it was the I, hormones I, I, that I don't got see them, uh, I don't see how they can attach that to the gun right <laughs> because no. it was transsexual help me, help me understand that's what Mr. Gibbs please, okay, I'm please gonna help, help me understand, understand this I'm and, and uh, Tracy I want to thank you for this quote <laughs> never in recorded history thank you, as a four year old found his father's loaded book and accidentally killed his younger sister say that again never in recorded history right. as a four year old uh -huh. found his father's loaded book and accidentally killed his younger sister hmm. okay yeah, it's too many goddamn guns, man. It's just too many guns. Thought of the day. There are simply too many guns in America. <laughs> we got more guns than people. Estimates are that we have 120.5 firearms per 100 residents. I'm sure it only got one or two. And more guns are sold every day. And to we get serious about taking guns out of circulation, something people tremble in fear to discuss, not us. Any attempt to stop gun violence is decidedly unserious. Okay, and you know you you, you know why hunters don't deer hunters don't use AR-15s? Because you shoot a deer with an AR-15, there's nothing left to eat. That's not true. Okay. okay, I'm a gun person. I know that's a lie. Is it? Yes. The gun, the bullet that comes out of AR-15 is a 223 okay. or 556, okay. and it's only one so that's to two inches long. Mm -hmm. It's not even that long. So all of that's a lie. If you're ignorant to guns, you would think that that's true. Okay. That's not possible. What? Okay. 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 AR-15. It's not possible. Okay. 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 I take your word for it. Okay. But AR-15s are used for what? It's not a sports no, weapon. No, AR-15 AR is a weapon AR of killing. I'm going to tell you, AR-15s mm -hmm. are used for planking and practicing mm -hmm. and home self-defense. That ain't what these mass shooters are using them for. These mass shooters are using AR-15s to run up in schools and kill goddamn children. Ooh, but the uh, government... <laughs> Yeah, and when listen, when, listen, when the listen, government listen this, when the listen, government listen, did, listen, you have to listen hold to on this. when the government did the ban of assault weapons to to the mass shootings went down. You, you threw my train of thought off. I'm sorry. I got something Go serious for you. You okay. threw me off. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, 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 and it would have set you up. It would have just set you up with all of that thought that you was talking about. Okay. But you threw me off, sir. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm my fault about that. I never. My fault. My fault, Brad. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but yeah, right. man, it's it's deeper than that, man. When yeah. you when you 
can have an 18-year-old be handed an AR-15 to go fight mm -hmm. for uh, another, uh, for, for a situation that they don't have nothing to about, know about, don't know if it's good, don't mm -hmm. know if it's bad. Just they drop you over in this area and they give you this AR-15 mm -hmm. and tell you to go out here and eliminate the, the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that that's not, that's cool to me. That's that's not cool to me. Is that cool to you? No. All right, no. then. So, I understand when, what you're saying. So, okay. you can't okay. really attack America for defending themselves. You know? Oh, wait a minute. I mean, and, whoa, and hold up, hold up. Let me get whoa, whoa. it out. Go ahead. You're going to mess me up. Okay. Let me get it out mm -hmm. now. In a situation, the AR-15 is not for the average person. It's for a hunter or a person that be in the woods that may come across a bear or a lion or something subjected to not be able to be stopped by a, a stick or a rock being thrown mm -hmm. or something that you don't have of power like a pistol okay. or a firearm or mm -hmm. arms that you you going to fight a bear with a stick or a rock. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. It's, this mm -hmm. is reality. Mm -hmm. And a bear can come out the woods into your backyard. You see it all the time mm -hmm. on TV and mm -hmm. on these I mean, come on, you got to think further than what their political agenda is. Mm -hmm. I, it's a million guns in the world. You got 10 mass shootings. That's not, the numbers is not even 0.001%. And you're making a big thing out of that. Okay, I mean, here's, here's my thing. Dead. Yeah, that's, here's my that's, thing. That's, that's not the gun. That's here's the individual my being crazy. Okay, here's my thing. And the individual being crazy with access to the weapons is a problem. If one child gets killed, that's too many for me. One child. One child. So if they gets, well, knife, listen, if let they me finish. I, 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 let you talk, I let you talk, brother. You listen up. They okay. put a knife in the building, I, they would have been better. Listen up. If they listen did up. it with a knife, it would have been better. No, here's the thing. If they did it with a knife, it would have been I better. I let you talk, brother. That's All the right? question. Look, a knife is not what we're talking about. We're yeah, talking, talking about, about guns. Period. We're talking about yeah, guns. So and so mass so shooters <laughs> don't go, and mass murderers don't go uh, in any building with a knife. The thing is this. One child is too many. One is too many. And anybody that says, I'd rather see that child die than give up my AR-15 can go to hell. That's for damn sure. And look, how many we, 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 we can take kill, this. Kill how, children killed. How many ARs, 15s, the government handed out and killed children? Oh, uh, that brings me. That brings Come me to on, the man. point. Stop. That brings me to the point where you what? said America needs to go defend itself. America does not defend itself. What? America is an empire that uses its military, which is nothing but a corporate security, to go and steal from other people and steal other people's resources. Say that again. They do what? They go and steal, steal. from other people. One more time. And I'll just, I'll just steal I'll just that. from other people <laughs> and steal their resources. Look, war you is... you want to protect all... yourself against that, bro. Look, I, I don't saying, know. I, I don't want... You want to take want... a knife and protect yourself against that and when it comes running you down? Look, when it comes down to protecting the difference, the difference between uh, protecting me, yourself and living in uh, uh, a barbaric, <laughs> violent society where everybody's on it's the ground been with that goddamn guy. guns. It's always been a barbaric, no. violent society. No, no, no. America, is a, America has always been a violent, it, barbaric society. Come on, now say okay? it. Say it. Come America on, has always been a violent, barbaric society. <laughs> and as long as we allow okay. the NRA and gun lobbyists to own our politicians and to allow everybody to run around with guns willy nilly this is what we're going to be and we're going to con and we're going right to continue to right, we're going to continue to see right to children killed happiness you know what i mean happiness you know what? is the individual man you have the right to no, happiness you know what that thing makes me think of John Lennon's song. What's that? Happiness is a warm gun. <laughs> Damn. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Yo, it would have been super sweet. That's right. It would have been super sweet if you had the John Lennon's song. Yeah, man. Know, but you know, they get you on all the um, copyright stuff, man. That's what it is. Uh, all right, all right. Time to end them up. Uh, hey.
WHDE 95.3 FM on Patrice Gibbs. No sir, oh, yes, we, we, we have a heated debate one day. We're gonna make the whole the show. show. We're gonna have a whole show about me and No Sir Roman debate <laughs> gun violence. Because this is just something that we have or that, that we really part company on. This is my boy, my brother, I love you and all that, but you wanna shut the hell up on that. <laughs> all right. All right, let me tell y'all something. All right. And this is something that came up last week. Everything comes out of blackness. Yeah, we we'll let the music grow. Yeah, we we'll let the music grow. We'll bring it down a little bit. Everything comes out of blackness. The universe. The universe comes out of blackness. Everything. You know, if you if you dig in the dirt and put a seed and cover it over, okay, that seed is in blackness. Life comes out of blackness. Okay. When 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 a woman's egg. It, it is fertilized by a man's sperm within her womb. Okay? That child grows in blackness. Blackness. Okay? All right? You cannot take two Chinese people and produce a black person. You cannot take two white people. The only thing two Chinese people can produce is a Chinese person. The only thing two Europeans can produce is another European. Okay. You can take a black couple because everything comes out of blackness and that child could come out white and it's still one of us. Everything comes out of blackness. And you blackness. don't want to be black. You don't want to be black. You know, we were never afraid to be black and to be African before until these people got to us. Because you look at our early institutions on the American soil. You look at the African on American soil. That's what he said he was. You had the African... First colored Methodist church. You had the African uh, uh, first understanding school. You had the African so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because we know that's who we are. Everything comes out of blackness. Blackness. WHGE 95.3 FM, the open eye. I'm Patrice Gibbs. I'm No Saroma. And as we always tell you, destiny determines who enters your life, but you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you and don't treat those who treat you as an option. All right, all right. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I got Yo, you know your boy be going in, so don't blame it on me this time. You seen him. You see what I'm saying? Yo, what's up, y'all? Yo, good tuning in. I thank y'all for tuning in. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Pat, what you got to say? Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate y'all. Thank you for all the comments and what have you. And like I always tell you, global African supremacy, okay? Because the world was a much better place when we ran the world, all right? And for those of you that think, oh, this is just, you know, the, uh, so we can get back to white people. No, it's it's not about that. It's not about that. They are destroying the world. It is our assignment to conserve the world. Peace and love. Patrice Gibbs. No Sarama streaming all platforms. Let's go get that. Yeah, I got. All right, all right. <laughs>